Hi there, and welcome to Learn Roslyn Now. Today we're going to take a look at uh, workspaces in Roslyn. So in past videos of Learn Roslyn Now, we've dealt with um, documents and syntax trees and semantic models for these trees. Um, but the Roslyn workspace layer works at a, a much higher level. It deals with uh, solutions that contain projects and projects that contain documents. And it sort of governs the interactions between these objects, like how you add documents to projects and, and so on. Um, in particular, today we're going to take a look at the MS Build workspace. So I've got a, um, a solution file here. Um, just a regular SLN file for the Newtonsoft JSON project. And the MS Build workspace understands uh, solution files and CS proj files and sort of traditional um, files that we've been using in Visual Studio for a long time. It doesn't actually understand the new DNX stuff. Um, so so uh, maybe at some point they'll create a workspace for that. Um, and, we'll, and we'll talk about other workspaces like the Visual Studio workspace and other videos. And, and who knows, if they make a DNX workspace, we'll probably create a, a video to, to walk through that. Um, but for now, we'll just use the, the, the classic MS Build Workspace. And the way we sort of get an instance to this is by just going um, MS Build Workspace.create. And there's a few different overloads here. One, uh, if you're sort of an MS Build Pro and you want to pass in custom properties that uh, change how these, you know, uh, these projects are loaded. Uh, this is where you, you pass those custom uh, MS build properties in. But for us uh, today, it's going to be fine just to create it with the, the defaults. So now we've got an empty MS build workspace. We want to uh, load a solution into that. So we'll go MS build workspace .open solution async, and it expects a path, which we've already created. And this is a asynchronous uh, method. So it's going to give us back a task. And normally you'd await this, but um, you know, today we're just gonna we're just gonna be lazy and force it with a dot result, and we'll just start running this to see uh, what's going on here. So this solution has inside of it, um, you know, it tells us that it belongs to an MS Build workspace, not some other kind. It's got a path. Um, it's got a version, sort of the last time it was saved on disk. Um, sort of some some supplementary information there. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just iterate over all the documents inside of this. So we'll go var project in solution dot projects, and then we'll do another one for var each document in project dot documents, and we'll just get the uh, maybe the name and the file path for this. So var name is equal to document dot name of our file path is equal to document dot file path and this should uh, kick off and we can take a look at some of the documents that exist within this uh, Newtonsoft JSON project so we can just browse through here and we can see there's some JSON reader exceptions so probably some custom exception that they've got something for J tokens to to govern equality between them um, JSON array contract and maybe what we'll do is we'll open up one of these files so I'll just copy the path from there We'll just open up this JSON array contract, and we can see it's just a, a C-sharp file. Um, and the reason I want to have this open is because we're going to change uh, this file, and we're going to save it to disk, and uh, we're going to use the MS Build workspace to do that. So I'll also copy this, uh, this name here. And what we'll do is we'll just get an instance to just this document. We don't need to read through all these other documents. So var document is equal to solution dot um, projects dot select many and then we just want our documents Oops. and we want them where their file path or their name is equal to and I had saved it so JSON array contract and I think there's probably just one of these but it's possible this one might exist in two so we'll see if an error gets thrown here um, or if, nope, it looks like everything checks out and we've got a, a single document here. Um, so what we can do is we can look at sort of the, the different ways in which we can manipulate documents. I don't think we did this in any previous videos, but you can manipulate the source code kind, um, which just is saying, is this a regular C-sharp file or is this sort of one of the new interactive script files um, that they just introduced in the latest update to, to Visual Studio 2015. Um, you can manipulate the syntax route, so if you want to pass in custom syntax trees, uh, you could do it this way, or you can just uh, update it with text, which is what we'll do. Um, and this expects just a, uh, a source text object, so not, not quite as easy as just a string, but it turns out source text is 
pretty pretty easy to create. You just go source text up from, and here we can pass in a string. This is invalid C sharp, so this won't compile. And uh, go quickly back and look at. There's also some uh, options for encoding and checksums uh, for these files, but for us, it's going to be enough to to just pass in the source text here. Um, and we're going to want to save this new document in a new file because um, all, all of these objects, or most of the objects in Roslyn are immutable. So if I just had document.withText source text, uh, it wouldn't have done anything. It uh, returns a document. And this new document is uh, going to be the one with our text. And we can just double check that by doing uh, new document.get text async and we'll be lazy again and just force it but we should be able to see that um, we just get our uh, this is invalid C sharp text back but if we go for test 2 is equal to document so the original dot get text async we'll see that nothing actually changed for that that first document there um, it still has everything there and if we actually go back to our other file we'll see you know nothing's changed on disk either um, and the reason for that is all we've done is we've created a new document based on the old document um, with our changes in it. Uh, we haven't persisted these changes anywhere. It sort of just exists within memory. Um, but we, what we want to do now is save this back to disk. Um, and there's one more point I want to make about immutability. When you create these new documents, um, it's not just the document itself which is new. It's the parent project. You know, if you go new document new document dot project. This project here will be new as well. Um, and if you go project dot solution, this solution parent parent solution will be um, new as well. They'll be different than the original documents project and different than the original documents solution. Now when I say they're new projects and new solutions, I don't mean that they're brand new projects with no documents inside of them. I just mean that they're new instances of a project and they have all the traditional, like they have all the documents that belong to it before with all the right text. The only difference is now they have this new child document inside of them. So this stuff can be a little bit confusing um, at first, and it takes some, some playing around with to understand the immutability and how these things interact with one another. Um, but just understand that when you make a new document, it belongs to a new project and a new solution, um, and that you have to somehow persist this somewhere if you want to. So what we'll do now is we'll just clean up all this stuff and we'll save this back to the MS Build Workspace. And the way we do that is we use MS Build Workspace dot try apply changes and we pass in a new solution here. And this will be um, the solution in which our new document exists. Now it's important to notice that this is try apply changes, not just apply changes. And the reason for that is it has the potential to fail. Um, so you should check the result here. And sort of the conditions that might cause this to fail, at least from my understanding, I've actually never seen it fail, but would be if you had like, you know, a bunch of different threads applying changes to uh, this workspace at the same time. Um, that, that can be sort of confusing. And as I, as I say this, people might say, well, doesn't immutability solve that problem, um, you know, of, of concurrent rights from threads? Um, but it turns out... Uh, this MS Build Workspace and workspaces in general are one of the very, very few places in Roslyn where there is mutability. So if there was like 10 threads with an instance to, uh, access to this instance and they were all, you know, trying to apply change to this, this MS Build Workspace would be um, changing under, you know, the feet of those threads and they'd be seeing different values coming into that workspace. Um, and the way you, you usually deal with this is you don't necessarily operate on a a workspace, you take the solution from the workspace, which you can guarantee that that solution will be valid. Um, it won't get changed in the future. And then you make all your changes to that. And then you try and apply it back to the workspace, which is what we're doing here. And now if someone came along and they manipulated the workspace while you were doing all your stuff, um, you might have to recalculate your work and try again. Um, but like I said, in, in practice, I haven't seen this fail. I, I don't think like ever for me. I'm, I'm guessing the Roslyn team does because when they have a Visual Studio workspace and you've got all these extensions and stuff trying to write to it, I imagine you start to see some changes there and you've, you know, you've got changes loading from disk and stuff like that. Um, so it must fail for them. But um, for the most part, you know, all you do is try apply changes and it works. Um, and what we'll do is we'll pass in our new document, our project, 
and the solution for this. And like I said, uh, these are all new objects that were created when we did this. So when we do this, we should hopefully get a, a true. Yeah, so it, it says it succeeded. And we can go and we can check um, on disk that this is about to reload. It's updated it on disk. Um, by the way, that's sort of unique to uh, MS Build Workspace. Um, some of the other workspaces, when you try and apply changes to them, it doesn't instantly save them to disk. You have to do, you know, one step more. Maybe there's some save function or something associated with this custom workspace. Um, some of the solutions, you know, they don't necessarily early have to exist on disk. It could be like an entirely in-memory workspace or in-memory solution. So it doesn't necessarily get saved to disk. Um, but the implementation of MS Build Workspace dictates that it comes from a solution on disk. And when you apply changes, it updates that solution and all its documents on disk um, as appropriate. So that's sort of, a, you know, a, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of lines of code here. Um, there was like 10 lines of code that we wrote, but there was a lot of new concepts um, to learn about MS Build Workspace. And it can be sort of a, you know, a lot to get your head around. Um, I've got a blog post about all the different kinds of workspaces that I'll link uh, in the notes below. Um, and if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments or, you know, message me on Twitter and I'm uh, more than happy to help out. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll, we'll try and get to the Visual Studio Workspace uh, later this week. Thanks.